Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Being an Austrian, I thought we can uh, talk about the Austrian school, and I'm in the short time available uh, <clears throat> referring to two famous names. Um, Eugen von Bremberg, who came actually from Innsbruck to Vienna, and there's a colleague here from Innsbruck. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the second one would be Alois Schumpeter, who in part is a little bit uh, on the fringes, I would say, of the Austrian uh, school. So let's, Eugen von Bremberg, uh, his famous uh, two-volume work, uh, Capital and Capital Interest, uh, I'm referring to the second part, the positive theory of capital, which was a provocative title uh, at the time, and catapulted uh, uh, Bern himself and the Austrian school to international uh, fame, because uh, uh, written in 1889 uh, <clears throat> in, in, uh, in Innsbruck uh, uh, still, it was translated uh, within two years, both in London and in New York, into English. So uh, it made the Austrian school uh, international, one could say. I'm taking this particular graph, which is not uh, from Bern um, It's uh, from Wixell, who summarized the positive theory of uh, capital in, one, in a one-page graph, ingeniously. And uh, here, uh, mind you, uh, produced a production function 35 years earlier than uh, Cap and Douglas' uh, 1928 in the American Economic Review. Um, on the vertical side, it's simply uh, the uh, uh, Productivity and uh, on the uh, horizontal, it's the uh, production uh, period, which is important in the um, Bavarian context. And uh, on the horizontal opposite side, and that's Vix Vixel's ingenious uh, contribution, um, he measures the roundaboutness of production. And uh, so we have vertical side is that labor productivity, production period. Uh, and I'm really making it very short here. Uh, let's say the utopian measure of Pavak of a mature capitalism is this formula two over. Uh, indefinite, and that's always approaching zero. And that's what Bembavec posed against Karl Marx. And Karl Marx, you could call it the negative uh, theory of capital, and Bembavec said positive theory. Uh, of capital. In other words, we do not need Marx to explain uh, the social uh, process or, let's say, uh, the development of capitalism. And in mature capitalism, and that now it's pure marginal utility theory, which is so very Austrian neoclassical, uh, <clears throat> in mature capitalism, capital accumulation will reach a level where every additional unit of capital approaches the value of zero. I'll make it again very short, and that's this formula. If you take this function, and let's say this would be mature capitalism at the end of the uh, uh, curve, then you can imagine the asymptotic, uh, uh, asymptotical approach uh, uh, on the left side of uh, the graph would go very, very, very far out indefinitely. So um, 
each additional unit of capital approaches uh, the value of zero. And uh, with this the case, and that's now, let's say, the twist of the argument, we do not need Marx. Because if this is the case, there's no point anymore to argue that there are owners of capital and there are non-owners of capital and the class antagonism will vanish. So the system of capitalism can deliver this out of its own, of its own strength. That's in a really sort of nutshell uh, uh, Bavek's positive theory of capital reinterpreted by Wixell. <coughs> Uh, when Babek entertained a very famous, a very, very famous uh, seminar uh, <clears throat> in Vienna, which was, of course, an anti-Marxist seminar, but it uh, uh, attracted the creme de la creme of the economists at the time, including left-leaning ones like uh, Hilferding or uh, uh, <clears throat> others uh, from the, let's say, more socialist side. And one of the participants, apart from me, says, and the whole peers of the Austrian school was uh, a young scholar called Alois Schumpeter. And now let's go. This is very cumbersome. That's what very few know. That's the original version, the German version, 1912, of his famous theory of economic development. Um, translated in 1934 at Harvard, and uh, this is what probably most of you are fam familiar with. with a cumbersome subtitle and uh, a little bit truncated uh, compared to the early condition. Now, uh, uh, Ben Barwerk was uh, a role model for Schumpet and supported Schumpet and his career very much. Also, he never became professor in Vienna, as you know. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Schumpet took up the Austrian school, and took up Ben Barbeck as well, uh, criticizing that the approach also of the positive theory of capital was a static one, and the Austrian school was arguing in a static, in a static way. Uh, in the second chapter of the theory of development, the caption is, uh, the circular flow of economic life as conditioned by given circumstances. That's the static. And Schumpeter admired, to a certain extent, uh, Karl Marx, as you know. And I quote, the only major attempt toward a problem of development is the one of Karl Marx. His uh, economic theory is aiming at the evolution of economic life as such. And, uh, uh, the circular flow, so that means dynamics. And uh, in a short version, in dynamic terms, uh, Schumpeter uh, takes position against Marx too, I think. Uh, he said what Marx can tell us about uh, economics and the dynamics of economics, we can also uh, tell in terms of capitalist uh, development. Again, we do not need Marx to explain in dialectic terms uh, the economic process. And let's take it uh, for the uh, argument um, together to follow this uh, uh, argumentation. The famous, uh, powerful sentence of Marx 
his thesis, the economic process is at any time and everywhere a social process. So no competition, uh, socialized markets, and so on. Uh, Schumpeter takes it as the thesis, well, we take the system as it is. It's a market-based system. It's our capitalism. And uh, the ant antithesis of uh, uh, <coughs> Marx then says, well, because of that, there are owners of capital in the capitalist system, and there are non-owners of capital in a capitalist system. And that's uh, the antagonism of driving the system in a dialectic sense. Uh, and Schumpeter takes it in a completely different direction. He says, yes, there are dynamics, but who provides the dynamics? The antithesis in Schumpeter's terms is the entrepreneur. This the entrepreneur, he never wants uh, equilibrium. He never uh, uh, wants to have a resting place in the economic development, but uh, he, in fact, is the driver of economic development and economic dynamics. The synthesis, of course, we know Marx needs a change of the system, huh? from capitalism to socialism with uh, entirely different uh, conditions. Uh, and the question is, not so obvious. What's the synthesis with Schumpeter? Schumpeter? That's, in Schumpeter terms, the observation that economic dynamics, as he interprets it on entrepreneurial terms, takes the economy to a higher level of welfare. That's uh, uh, the dynamics. And it's not a resting place. It goes on, there is no equi equilibrium, as the static interpretation, the Austrian school interpretation uh, in its core uh, says. There is never an equilibrium uh, in capitalism. And uh, <clears throat> that's, I think, the attractiveness and the somehow, to a certain extent, the hidden agenda uh, of the Schumpeterian theory of economic development. Thank you very much. Okay. The first one. Charlie, yeah. Just one. I think Thank we you. have time for the second one also. My name is Karl Socher from Innsbruck. And I, I hear next. Okay. Uh, it's working. It's working, yeah. Yes. And uh, you said that uh, Schumpeter. Uh, its main contribution was that he showed that innovations, entrepreneurial uh, motives, were the growth factor for an economy and that the economy would grow f uh, even when uh, the Marxian uh, conditions were fulfilled. And the I difference, the, I think, I, I didn't between... Get the last one. I didn't get it at all. The, the difference... I understand innovation and growth, but what did the, you say? The, the growth of the economy could go on uh, because the innovations are uh, giving... Uh, higher productivity uh, even of capital and the, the rate of interest would not fall as it would be with Marx. And then the difference between the Austrian school of Ben Bauwerk and uh, was that Schumpeter even thought that there will be innovations in a state, uh, in a socialist state. He described that in a socialist state, without private entrepreneurs, there would be created 
special forms of government invention <laughs> research. And so he said that even a socialist economy could go on growing, which is against uh, the Mises uh, word that the socialist has to break down because of the calculation uh, debate. And uh, therefore, I think that one cannot say that Schumpeter is an Austrian economist because e Austrian economists are in favor of a free market and private property uh, market economy. Thank you. Well, but in his uh, 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 theory of wirtschaftlichen Entwicklung theory, I mean, he's fully, uh, uh, let's say, on the Austrian uh, track apart uh, from the dynamics, uh, of course. And uh, uh, as it comes to socialism, of course, uh, Charlie, there's always a temptation uh, to dub uh, Schumpeter is a socialist to a certain extent. Capitalism, socialism, and uh, uh, <coughs> democracy. The first sentence of the chapter of capitalism, you know, can capitalism survive? I don't think so. Uh, the first sentence of, uh, uh, <coughs> social, of the chapter of socialism is, uh, can socialism work? Yes, I think so. And then, if you really read it, and I maintain that. It's worth, worth reading. In 1942, it was the first prediction, a subtle and fundamental prediction that socialism can't work and uh, has to succumb to its own internal uh, problems and to uh, uh, <clears throat> misallocations and so on. There's this famous example, he says, well, it only works and that's the nomenclatura. If you label the nomenclatura and the atrocities with a label and uh, make them responsible, what they sort of uh, uh, argue socialism has to, has to uh, provide and socialism uh, uh, has to, let's say, uh, deliver as a system, but this never works. So I, I still maintain it's the first prediction of the 18, uh, uh, 1989 downfall of the Soviet system in 1942. And so, uh, uh, to, he has been dubbed as a socialist because of uh, this first sentence, but no one reads the whole story, or very few. And just a short, yeah. short. Yeah. Uh, I want to pick up on that. So Schumpeter got a bit more pessimistic, actually, in capitalism, socialism, about the entrepreneur. Ah, rightly. That's a sequel to the German optimistic. Yeah. So, so, so my point is, so, so he, he, he started to distrust entrepreneurship, yeah? But what that, uh, uh, you know, he, he thought it's going to bureaucratize. Well, he didn't, he, no, he didn't distrust it. He despaired about it. Uh, okay, that's even, okay, anyway, so, so what, what the missing point is, and I would like to have your opinion, is the consumer, yeah, as a reactive element uh, in the economy doesn't feature a trumpet at all. So he's basically do it, saying nothing about it. That's quite actually uh, interesting to me. Yes, it's, uh, it's true, yeah. but uh, indirectly, yes, if you, uh, if you, Consider, I mean, that's the subtitle, uh, Capital and the Business Cycle and the, in Particular Interest. There is an indirect uh, link, but why did he despair? You have to put yourself 1942. That's when the industrial military complexes uh, came up and in fact uh, uh, continued uh, to grow and dominate the economic uh, of sphere and economic uh, systems, both in the United States and then later on uh, in the Soviet Union, of course, anyway. Um, and uh, that made that, uh, well, that made him pessimistic that entrepreneurship, as he saw it, uh, couldn't uh, survive. But uh, I mean, uh, this prediction uh, was proved to the contrary, as you know. Now it's uh, uh, 
not only in scientific terms, entrepreneurship has uh, become a fad, almost uh, a hype in the United States and elsewhere, and small uh, entrepreneurial type businesses are, uh, let's say, uh, complemented everywhere left and right. <laughs> One is inclined uh, to say there are more than 400 entrepreneurship chairs have sprung up over the last three decades in the United States uh, alone, proving Schumpeter again. Okay, thank you for your presentation.